All right, good evening, YouTube. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the timeline and progression of the natural lifter. So I commented this on another YouTube video. It might have been anywhere on Natural Hypertrophy's channel or Jeffrey Verity Schofield's channel. But it's something that I kind of think is necessary for most people to kind of understand. So good advice given on a bad time is bad advice. And oftentimes because of the YouTube algorithm and so many other factors, a lot of content has to be pushed out. And so you receive a lot of advice that might not be applicable to you. So how can you decide whether or not something is worthwhile or not worthwhile? Well, that's what this video is going to kind of assist you with. This is going to be kind of like the first part of that. There is a lot of bad information out there, not because it is bad in and of itself, but just because it's, it's, it's information that you just don't need and it's giving you a false focus that you just do not need to pay attention to at your current stage. So if you've ever played a role playing game, you know that you start out with really bad stats, really bad gear and really boring quests. And what does that sound like? It's that it sounds like what it's like to start out in the gym. You don't know what you're doing. You generally speaking, shouldn't have um, belts, straps, wrist wraps or anything of that nature because you just don't need it, um, in my opinion. And then um, you have to really, really focus on technique and getting good at certain things. In my opinion, the gym is the only RPG that matters and you need to kind of think of it as that way because you need to build up your stats, you need to build up your skills, and then that is what allows you to level up and progress in life. So if this topic interests you, my name is Carlos the King, StanceRank.com. On my website, you can find my online personal co personal training, coaching, as well as the fitness apparel of the strong and the self starters. So this is one of our designs here. We try to keep our designs minimalistic, but also fashionable. So let's get started into the actual um, video. So why do I think it's a good idea to kind of put this in a format of levels, right? So, you know, level one, not, not like, so like someone who's level one is not going to have the same type of skills, strengths, and gear as someone who is level 100, right? So here is why I think it's not the case. The gym is only RPG that matters. That's what I mentioned earlier. Generally speaking, like, obviously you can play video games, you can... Um, and well, this can apply to anything you pursue really, but generally speaking, because this is a power building, power building channel, then we know that the gym is where we actually level up. It's where we develop our skills. It's where we move closer to our goal. Now, if you have other goals in, in mind, whether that be, um, art, like any type of artistic goals, music goals, or any other cre creative endeavor, that is the RPG that matters most to you. And this is just something you might do on the side, but it doesn't really matter because, if you are going to become good at something, you don't just pick up one you don't just pick up one skill and then drop it as soon as you level up. That's not how it, how it should work. Generally speaking, what ends up happening is you pick up some basic skills, some basic knowledge, some basic tools that you can use, and then as you advance, those tools begin to serve you in more variety of different ways. That's how it should work when it comes to training as well. You need to think of these fitness levels or your journey as levels because you should be able to maintain these abilities over time. One thing that I don't think should happen is you start out as a skinny kid and then become a fat power lifter and think to yourself, oh my God, I'm so great now. The reason being is because as a natural lifter there and as someone who is trying to be strong, big or whatever, health should always be a part of that. And in my opinion, if you kind of have that in mind, there should be some really baseline kind of uh, basic things that you can accomplish at any given moment that I think should be applicable for everyone because you're natural. So these are, this is where we're going to get into the levels for each lifter, right? So if you are just starting out, or if you are might have a little bit of experience or whatever, but generally speaking, if you don't meet these criteria, you are in level one, um, level one to 10 zone. So you are the, do you even lift rat slash pot slayer? So if you have played a video game such as uh, Legend of Zelda, you know that you're generally speaking, you're going to get a lot of, let's say coins or whatever, or points by breaking pots or the first enemy that you're going to encounter in an RPG is usually a rat or something of that nature, right? So if you're here, you have no athletic and physical training background. So you have literally done nothing but play video games for most of your life. This is where I started. I have done nothing but play video games and watch anime my entire life. And then I started here. So you struggle and given that you struggle to rep out even basic bodyweight exercises. 
the first time I did a push-up, it wasn't even a real push-up. I'm pretty sure I like wheezed after and then I gave up for three months. So we all start somewhere and that's why the message of this channel, the message of my brand is to start where you stand. It doesn't matter where you stand so long as you just move forward, right? Your technique on the basic barbell lifts suck. And then it's not your fault. You are new. It's not your fault that you are not good at the basic barbell lifts. It's something you need to build up over time. So don't be beating yourself up over that. Now, the next thing, you don't need an optimal training program. You just need general exercise and to be very consistent and loyal to it. So one thing that is really important to understand at this phase is the fact that general fitness does help build up specific fitness. So if you are trying to be as strong as you possibly can, just get fit first and then build upon that because it's important to be, in anything that you do, you try to build a really wide base so you can hit really high peaks. It doesn't really change even if when you look at it from a more macro perspective because you need to build a bigger base and that is going to be your fitness. That's why in more strength terms, it's called general physical preparedness. But generally speaking, you just need to be a fit person. You, there's a couple things that I think you should be able to do and that kind of puts you in that fitness zone. So here's what it is. You will graduate or you will level up past this zone when you can do a couple things. And this should be really, really easy things. But as a personal trainer, I've seen these be things that most people cannot do and a lot of people avoid even though they're in the gym. First, you should be able to do at least 20 inverted rows. I wanted to put chin-ups in here, but I do think that they actually fit better into the next level bracket. Here, I do think that it's just better to be inverted rows because it's a progression that builds up into chin-ups. So you should be able to do at least 20 inverted rows and 30 push-ups in a single set. If you can do neither of those two things, you have no business really thinking to yourself, how can I Im improve my bench press in the next year? Obviously you can do it, but generally speaking, if you neglect this, I do think that you're shooting yourself in the foot. I do think that you're missing out on a learning experience. And also think about the amount of work that it would take you to develop into doing 30 push-ups into a single set. I wanted to increase it up to like 50 or 70, but I know um, <laughs> that those standards might not appeal too much to most people. And I do think that 20 to 30, uh, 20 inverted rows and 20, 30 push-ups is more than doable and is more than enough to kind of be past that very basic do you even lift rat, rat slash pot slayer um, stage. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to be able to run one mile without stopping, without stopping, without walking. You want to be able to maintain a pace, even if that pace is 15 minutes. I do think that just being being able to maintain that uh, that singular pace, maintain jogging form and give an honest effort and be able to run a whole mile nonstop is good enough. Now, obviously, I would refer that to come down to maybe like 12, 10 minutes, but that's just me. Next is that during this stage, you just want to get familiar with the basic um, gym, the basic barbell movements, all gym pieces of equipment. So dumbbells, machines, and especially your own body. You should be able to master body weight exercises, the basic ones at least. So I'm not talking about like levers, planches, or anything of that nature. I'm literally just asking you, please be able to do pull-ups, be able to do push-ups, be able to do dips. Squats and lunges are really easy, um, generally speaking, and those are going to be things you're going to add load to anyway. So you should be able to maintain that throughout your lifting career. If forever, for whatever reason, you lose your ability to maintain your own, to be able to move your own body weight, you've gone too fat, you're going too far, remember. Unless you are the 100% genetic elite who will lift literally a thousand pounds, then maybe, sure, you can throw all of this to the side because of just how advanced you're going to be. But if you're not going to be that person, which is more than likely that is to be the case, you should at least try to stick to this, master it, and get good with it, and build from there. Next, let's look at the level 11 to level, uh, level 20. At this point, you are now a capable fetch quester. If someone were to ask you to do something, you can probably do it. You are now the guy who, if you tell someone, you go to the, the gym, they'll believe you. They'll think like, oh, okay, you go to the gym, like you do look like you work out, but you're not the biggest dude in the world. But if they need to move a couch, you're gonna be the first person that they call. And then they're gonna give you pizza afterwards and you're gonna be a very happy guy. At least that's what happens with me, right? Anyway, you can actually start in this phase also. If you have, played a sport, you might actually be in this phase without really knowing it because generally speaking, when you play a sport, they do like train you, they do a bunch of things that require you to just like do some basic cardiovascular conditioning, basic house length movements, or some maybe some basic weight training. But generally speaking, most people will either start in the one to 10 level, but you might even start here. But generally speaking, if you have not played any sports, 
you need to graduate from that and then you end up here so here basic low skill bodyweight exercise have been mastered and multiple reps can be achieved so you should be able to hit that 20 inverted rows and 30 push-ups and now you should be able to do more than that you should be able to hit five to ten chin-ups i included this range just because five chin-ups from a 120 pound person versus five chin-ups on a 220 pound person is very different that and that 120 pound person should be doing something closer to 10 whereas someone who is on the other end of the spectrum should be going for should be, get to about five because people are built differently but at the end of the day if both of them can do 10 that's pretty good next is dips you should be able to do dips because push-ups have become so easy for you obviously push-ups can be something that you add load to and it's a very viable and effective exercise but generally speaking what ends up happening with calisthenic exercise is that you go to harder variations those harder variations become easy and you have to enter into that skill work level but the thing is like most people don't really need to or want to do that so you just get to the dips add weight to it and then boom you're probably stronger in the basic barbell lifts as, as well and you should be able to do at least 50 push-ups with no rest in between just one straight set of 50. this should be on top of everything that you've already done it's not like you can accomplish level one to ten and then just completely stuff yourself in, in the face because what's going to end up happening is you're going to lose your ability to be in that level one to ten zone you need to maintain it so that way you can actually enter that level 11 to 20 zone which is right here the next thing that you want to achieve or will achieve as a result of being in the zone is that you will now have decent technique on the barbell movements and you can actually lift heavy now because your technique is actually professional enough when you're in that earlier stage that one to ten level phase your technique is just so bad that generally speaking all you're doing is learning the technique of the movement you're not really putting on much strength because the amount of load that you're putting onto the bar for the first couple months maybe in the first couple years or year is more so due to the fact that your technique is getting better not because you're getting stronger um but here that's no longer the case you are now able to build strength and size as a result of using the barbell lifts and they are great ways to build strength and size if you are closer to level 11 you want to be aiming for 135 for 10 reps on the bench press 225 for 5 on the squat and at least a 315 deadlift this is very basic level strength goals and these are things that you can achieve within a year i have coached people to get to this point it's not where a lot of people start especially depending on like where their build is at and a bunch of different things but generally speaking uh, what i have found when i do coach more general population clients who are trying to get into the gym especially like let's say if they haven't really worked out um growing up generally speaking this is going to be a part where they're like decently strong they've made a decent amount of muscle gains their body does look a lot different than when we first started so this is why i call it the level 11 to level 20 zone because you've already mastered all of that and now you're making gains that are distinctly different from earlier. Where I think you actually go into closer to level 20 and beyond is when you can do 225 bench uh, for five on the bench press, 275 for five on squats, and at least 365 or 365 for five. I think I meant to put it for a one, but both of them were quite honestly um, for the deadlift. And at this point, your grandmother is very, very proud of you. You're now grandma's big boy. And if your grandma has passed, my deepest condolences. And if you do not have a grandma, meaning like uh, you have never met her, I can be your grandma and I'm proud of you. So anyway, that's what the level 11 to level 20 zone is. Now let's get into level 21 to level 30. You are now the potential hero in the gym. You can lead a party, you help others, you kiss babies because you are just that guy. You are now the guy who people look to for some advice because they like look at you and think to yourself, damn, you looked, you used to look so different. And now like uh, in your friend group, you should be one of the stronger members. You can bench press 275 for at least five reps. You can rep out 315 and you can probably rep out 405 on the deadlift. This is in addition to everything from before obviously i'm using the big three as a way to kind of gauge progress but here's the thing if you are in this phase you should be strong outside the big three as well here i say something um, i mentioned you want to be able to use the dumbbell bench for at least 75 pounds for five to ten reps and you want to be able to do a dumbbell rows with that much weight as well you should aim to have your barbell row in whatever variation to be just as strong as your bench press if not stronger so either matching the reps or matching the weight that you use like your one rep max or let's say your five rep max you want to be able to do weighted chins and dips you should be able to barbell overhead press 
let's say at least 100 pounds. I'm tempted to say like 135 pounds. And your ability to, let's say, run a mile might not necessarily be improved, but it shouldn't be lost either. Your ability to do body weight exercises should not, not be lost at this phase. If you are doing this trade, what you're actually doing is kind of entering these levels almost uh, artificially. And that's not what you want to do. You want to make sure that when you progress through these levels, you maintain the adaptations present in each one. Being able to do chin-ups, dips, bodyweight exercises should never be lost in the pursuit of strength. Now, obviously, top-end performance, like I'm not saying you need to be able to do 100 push-ups at every single time, like, or whatever, but generally speaking, you should be able to hit this in addition to everything I was already laid out. 50 push-ups when you can do 275 for five should be pretty easy, but here's the issue. If you become 275 pounds, you are going to lose that, and that's why I'm putting out these levels and trying to make sure that you understand that you, these things should come from there. At this phase, you're probably going to need a bit more of a intermediate program, whereas in the previous phase, you could probably use more of a just a basic linear program, and generally speaking, that's what is that's okay. When you are back at the level one, the level 10 stage, you don't really need a program. You just need to exercise and exercise regularly. Here, you can use any starter program and then just modify it from there until you get to this point. Most people can get to this point with just basic novice programs. It's not that difficult to do on those linear programs and then just modify over time to get to that point. But here, now you're gonna be more so in the intermediate stage and here's where you're going to probably meet your first plateau. Here's where you're going to actually need to think about programming and things of that nature and actually think to yourself, okay, the reason why my progress has stalled is because I'm now stronger, but also because the needs of my program have now changed and this is where that's going to possibly happen. And the reason why I say potential hero and not a for sure hero is because you can basically just fall apart right here. If you decide to give up here, you think you hit your natural limit just because progress has slowed down, you refuse to learn some basic programming or just talk to some people who might be able to help you, then you are just going to give up and then you're going to stay here forever. You're never really going to go past that. But the thing is, like, this is pretty impressive. So you're a lot stronger than most people here. So it's not too bad. But at the same time, if you want to go further beyond, you need to really think about programming, your consistency, your workout quality, your adherence to your diet. And these are things that are going to be take place here. If you can get past this stage, you enter into the chosen one zone. You're level 31 to 40. You have now ascended beyond the normal man. This is why fake naturals exist, because fake natties want to become what you become at this stage. I do not think I'm here yet, maybe in strength, but in terms of like, let's say body composition, I think I have ways to go. But generally speaking, you are strong. It doesn't matter what exercise or lack thereof, you are strong. You should be able to match your friends in body weight exercises. You should be able to actually do more than them. You should be able to demonstrate any exercise any person throws at you or the needs of whatever exercise you need to demonstrate for anyone else. Your technique is good and you can hit very naturally achievable numbers, which I think a lot of people are kind of like underselling them with. So I do think every guy who is just dedicated to the craft, dedicated to building themselves up, building muscle, getting stronger, can hit these numbers. I think anyone can hit a any guy can hit 315 on the bench press, 405 on the squat, and 500 pounds on the deadlift. Now, if you are a female, I would just take 75% of any of the weight um, recommendations that I mentioned earlier. But I do think guys should be able, can hit these numbers and females maybe about 75%. You should be able to lift 100 pound dumbbells easily. You should be able to do them with rows, bench presses, maybe even like an, a dumbbell overhead press for a single rep or something of that nature, but you should be able to move a 100 pound dumbbell because you are strong with more than just the barbell. This is a power building channel, but generally speaking, the barbell movements are really great metrics for strength and muscle size, but the big three are good examples here. You should be able to overhead press at least 135 pounds, maybe more, possibly 185, but Generally speaking, you should be very strong here. You can max out all the, you can max out the stack on most exercise machines. So you can put it at the very um, bottom weight, the heaviest weight, and you might, and you should be able to do at least one rep. Obviously, you won't be able, um, able to accumulate a volume there, but you should be able to do it because you're strong at this point. You are the chosen one. 
At this point, you have broken past your plateau. You've kept going with it. It's now part of your lifestyle. You are literally the person who has lifted for years on end, maybe close to a decade at this point, maybe less, depending on how on the rate of progress. But generally speaking, you are now the guy people look and look to and say, like, without a doubt, you work out. I never need to doubt anything. If there comes a moment where I need to, like, let's say, like, um, a fire starts, a tree falls, and then there's something trapped underneath the tree and someone needs to lift it, they're going to look to you. You are the chosen one because in moment, moments of crisis, they're going to look to you. And then, and then back with that simple example, if there is an option between the chosen one and the fetch quester, they're going to choose you over the other guy to lift the couch and help you move. So that's something that comes with the territory, accept it, but at least you know you are now the chosen one because you have made such great games. And this is why... This is where a lot of people think that the natural limit is, but there's no such thing as the natural limit. But this is why a lot, where a lot of people will try to take SARMs, performance-enhancing drugs, or anything of that nature to try to get to this point. So it's kind of suspect that people are taking unnatural substances to, to achieve something that is a bit more than achievable naturally. So take that for what you will. I do think anyone who's committed, anyone who takes that time, can hit these numbers. And I've seen it happen time and time again. Um, so it's very natural. This is very achievable naturally. But now let's go to level 41 to level 99. At this phase, you compete. <laughs> Whether you compete or in bodybuilding, powerlifting, strongman, it doesn't really matter. Um, you, can, you, you can compete at this stage. Or you just meet competition levels if you choose not to compete. You've lifted for at least 10 years. Maybe, like Depending on your genetics, maybe you got to this point um, a bit sooner. But generally speaking, most people who are just average, at about 10 years, you're going to get to this point. Maybe even more years or even more decades. Because I've met people who've been lifting for 20 years, getting up to these kinds of levels. But generally speaking, at this point in time, these are still things that are very naturally achievable. But it just takes time. It takes a lot of time. If you're going to go the natural route, which is way more rewarding in my opinion, it just takes more time. But here's the thing, at this point in time, people are going to start thinking that you're not natty. At least the people who have some inkling of um, fitness, gym, culture, knowledge, right? Now the natural population or the general population will think people in the previous stage are not natty. But, and <laughs> even people who are just normies who are in like basically appropriating our culture or our um, pursuit of the gym might think you're not natty at this phase. But here... A lot of people are going to think you're not natural, especially if you're lean. So think about like Omar Esau or something like that. Maybe uh, natural the natural hypertrophy, Jeffrey Verdi Schofield, and a bunch of other high quality natural lifters in the space. A lot of people think they're not natural just because they're lean and they're strong. And they're not even the strongest guys in the world. But at the same time, just because they're stronger than most people, just because they look more muscular than most people, they think they're not la natural. But the thing is, if you could get compared to actually enhanced lifters and naturally and actually enhanced athletes, you look nothing like them. But the thing is, you look pretty damn close. So good job to you there. Your strength performance is the result of decades of hard training, years upon years of hard training, weeks upon weeks. You have just spent so much time putting in you in the work that you have been able to achieve something. One example here is the four or five bench press. This was achieved by Alex at um, Alpha Destiny. He was a little bit thicker when he did it, but at the same time, I know for a fact, he was still able to at least run a mile. He was still able to do dips and pull-ups. He was still able to do some high quality rep work. I think right after he hit 405, he hit 225 for like 30 plus reps um, on the bench press. So you were able to maintain all of that as a result and still get to this point of strength. That's why I think it's important to go through levels because I have met people who might make the change and say, you know what, all I care about is strength now. And then strength is squat bench dead. They lose the ability to move their body weight and then everything just kind of goes to shit. And guess what? For a moment in time, I was that person. It wasn't until recently that I started to like kind of like get back into my roots and get back to being truthful to myself about my goals that I was starting able to become more adept at certain things. I'm now 255 pounds. That's 20 pounds lighter than I was when I started this channel. And last time I was able to hit 10 pull-ups and 10 chin-ups was when I was 225. So even though I'm 25 pounds heavier, my ability to control my body weight has increased because I just put more emphasis on it because I started to honor the thing that I do believe to be necessary here, which is once you gain something, you shouldn't lose it. Obviously, you're going to lose the top um, top end of it. So like when I was 180, 200 pounds, I might have been able to do 20 pull-ups or 20 chin-ups. 
but that's not what I'm asking you. I'm just saying that there are a, there is a certain amount, a certain level that you should be able to maintain throughout your lifting career. And I don't think that's unreasonable to ask, especially because if you're natural, you need to also be healthy. There's no point in sacrificing your health unless you are that person who is going to be the top of the cream of the crop in bodybuilding, um, powerlifting, or strongman, maybe even Olympic weightlifting. But generally speaking, at that point in time, if you are that kind of person, you might go the enhanced route. But if you're natural, health should always be a, um, a metric. So obviously, go talk to your doctors and um, go get your blood works done. But also, if you can do pull-ups, chin-ups, run a mile without stopping and do all of that, you're probably doing pretty well for yourself. So that is the levels as they stand right now. If you have any ideas for other ways to kind of break down the levels and maybe even make more um, brackets in between the levels or maybe even condense them, shorten them, maybe add some things, let's make this something that we work on together. Let's make this criteria something that we build upon together. So when you move on, progress, and everything stuff of that nature, let's add that into the comments below. I'd like to hear your opinions. Other than that, my name is Carlsa King, stanstrike.com. If you like the video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.